Hey, how's it going? Happy Easter. Now, I'm not religious myself, but I do appreciate the public holiday. And as a triathlete, are you younger than your peers that maybe don't move as much? Possibly. This is due to uh, the special relativity, which states that the faster you go relative to a stationary observer, the shorter the distance you experience and also the less time you experience. So it's called time dilation and length contraction. Time dilation because for each second that a stationary observer on Earth or who's standing still experiences, your second will be slightly longer. So your time is dilated. There's length contraction is because the distance that you see over that second is actually a little bit smaller than what someone who's standing still would see. So how does this sort of thing affect you? Well, for one thing, did you really complete that race? With length contraction, what you experience as the distance is not what a stationary observer experiences. What you actually experience is actually slightly less than that. Very tiny, but very much slightly less than that distance. And also as part of the same coin, or the other side of the same coin, is your time dilation effects. So when you finish the race, what your watch measures is actually gonna be slightly less than what is measured by the watch that was used for the race, since that's at a stationary point and your watch was moving with you. So therefore, you will have finished slightly faster on your watch than what the race clock says. So does this actually affect you? Did you finish that race properly? Do you need to readjust the time that you got for that race? Well, no, not really. See, the effects of this are so minuscule at the speeds that we go at that it is pretty much negligible. For instance, the Ironman that I did last year, that was 226 kilometers, and I did it in about 13 and a half hours. So the average speed across that entire time that I was going at was about 17 kilometers per hour. And so across that length of time, I actually experienced 0 0.0000000000 less seconds than someone who was standing there watching. That is so small that it's inconceivable. All right, well, that was pretty much nothing. So maybe let's have a look at something which might be a little bit more significant. So cycling, you go at maybe 30 kilometers an hour. And let's say you're a really avid cyclist and you cycle for 30 kilometers an hour for two hours every single day. Well, over a year, you're still only younger by 0.0000000101 seconds. So that's eight zeros, still pretty much nothing. All right, so the effects of time dilation and length contraction don't really affect us in any real way. But what they do affect are objects that are going a lot closer to the speed of light or a much higher proportion of the speed of light. Of course, nothing can go faster than the speed of light that we know of. And what's something which a lot of people, especially triathletes, rely on? GPS. So the GPS satellites that are flying through the sky are going through at 14,000 kilometers per hour, which that is absolutely ridiculously fast. Still nowhere near the speed of light, but it is still incredibly fast. It's somewhere along the lines of like two kilometers per second. That sort of fast. That is where you are actually going to start seeing some of the effects of time dilation. And with those GPS satellites, they have to take account of time dilation. And so a satellite traveling 14,000 kilometers an hour, 365 days per year, 24 hours per day, over a year, it will be 0.00265 seconds younger. Now, even though 0.00265 seconds doesn't sound like too much, that is a massive difference. And if that isn't accounted for in the GPS satellites, then they just won't work properly. So while you can't see the effects of time dilation in your physical body that much, it's not noticeable, it's pretty much negligible, you do notice it in your GPS, so in your watch or your phone, whichever is using the GPS satellites. If anyone wants to try this out yourself and see how much younger you actually are, um, there are calculators available online, just in Google. So normally you'll enter the time for 
the person traveling or the time for the stationary observer and what speed they were going at and it tells you how much younger you are. Or if you want to get mathematical about it, you can work it out yourself. The equation is so t equals t0, so the time for the stationary observer, divided by the square root of 1 minus the velocity squared over c, which is the constant, so the speed of light, squared. Surprisingly simple equation for a surprisingly complex and amazing little phenomena. Anyway, that's just me having a bit of fun. Um, so this week, I've been doing more training. As I said, I've done my 11 kilometers on Saturday. Quite busy, uh, doing about five kilometers today. So this is my little break in the middle of the run. I'm about, about, about two and a half kilometers right now. It's also about my broken toe. So I managed to actually get in to see the specialist uh, last week on Monday, which is really quick. Like if I'd been waiting to go see the specialist from the referral from the GP, I would have been waiting weeks, if not months. But by going to the emergency department, I was able to get a referral and they gave me a Monday morning slot sort of referral. So you just turn up on a Monday morning, you've got to have booked in previously. You turn up during that booking allocation and then they see you. So I went to the emergency department on the Friday and by the Monday I was at the specialist. And it seems like everything is actually okay. So my bone, because when they touch the toe, it doesn't hurt, therefore my bone is healed. Now in the x-rays, it does still show a fragment of the bone sort of detached from the main part of the bone. What that actually is, is that I've got um, there's scar tissue and fibers that are connecting the two fragments together. So while it's not, po it's probably not going to have any bony connection tissue between the two bony parts. And so that kind of means that I have an extra bone in my body, a little bit. And so as I said, the two bone fragments are connected by kind of scar tissue and fibers, which during the first four weeks, I did the right thing. I kind of stayed off my feet and that allowed those two fragments to fuse together with those uh, scar tissue and fibers, but it fused together quite stiff. So that is why I've been experiencing pain when I try and bend my toe since that point. It has actually been healed since week four, but it just hurts because it's a little bit stiff. And so the advice from the specialist is uh, keep pushing it. So keep trying to bend it little by little, um, which is something I wasn't really doing before because and I thought that maybe pushing it would actually make it worse. So now I know, um, push the bone a little bit, keep squeezing it, stop when it hurts, but just keep, keep trying to push it and it will loosen it up little by little. And the not so good news from all this is that I may never get full motion of that toe again. But it is my little toe. So to be honest, I don't expect that much motion from it. So every day at certain points throughout the day, I tend to just bend my toe a little bit. So right there, it kind of hurts. So you just push it until it hurts a little bit and then back off. And if after another six weeks, um, it still hurts when I bend it, that's when there is potentially something a little bit more that is wrong. But it is good to know that it's not broken and that it is actually supposed to look like that. And it is supposed to be a little bit sore. For anyone else out there who's broken a bone, how long did it take for you to get full range of motion? Let me know in the comments below. All right, well that about does it for me this week. I've got to get out there and do the rest of my 5K run. Thanks for watching. If you want more swim, bike, run and exercise content every week from here in Australia, then hit that like and subscribe button and I will see you in the next one. Cheerio.